I am Gian, the founding pastor of Victory Church from Odessa, Texas. I say hello to you. Hello and welcome. Hola. This is our worship service number 242. I'm sorry, 244 since we started the church. And today, June 27, 2021, the topic of this Sunday is the Inquisition. And I know that this is just the title is already making you feel nervous, right? And the image on the screen, ooh, I know. But anyways, here everyone in the church has their bulletins already, and I invite you to go to the website, vchurch.us, if you would, please. And on the tab, bulletins, you will be able to download the bulletin of this day, or the other option is to simply grab your phone, point towards the QR code, and you will be able to click on the link and there, you will download the bulletin of this morning. Good morning again. And one more time, we want to say thank you so much for your support. To all our beautiful church members, you are so kind to help us guys with all the expenses. Your contributions are so important. Thank you so much. And uh, of course, remember, you can do it through the website or sending a text message or sending a mail, a check in the mail if you prefer. <laughs> Thank you so much, our beautiful church members, for your support. Thank you very, very much. And thank you, Sebastian, for your work with the broadcast, doing good. And thank you, Tracy, for those beautiful songs that you have sang this morning. Thank you. The Inquisition is an interesting message. And I will start today by reading for all of us here, from the easy to read version, Matthew chapter 10, verses 21 and 22. If you come with me to the reading in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, please, Lord, guide us. Brothers will turn against their own brothers. These are words from the Lord Jesus. And hand them over to be killed. Fathers will hand over their own children to be killed. Can you believe this? Children will fight against their own parents and will have them killed. Everyone will hate you because you follow me, but the one who remains faithful to the end will be saved. Friends, this portion of the scripture is really scary. And quite often we don't want to hear this kind of things, especially when, when it's about persecution or betrayal. We don't like to hear that. And I know this is not inspiring to you, but one of the things that we all need to do, Christians, is take the whole scripture and read it entirely from Genesis to Revelation and uh, go through the scripture, studying everything that is written there because every portion of the scripture has a purpose. Scripture is inspired by the Holy Spirit but it has a plan, a purpose. And of course, when you think about betrayal, family betrayal, particularly because we are worshiping Jesus, we just don't like that idea. We just wonder what's really going on. What is what the Lord Jesus meant here? What is what he said? Well, today we are going to talk about the Inquisition, and I want to share with you seven facts about the Inquisition that have to do with us in America today. Okay? So, the first thing that I want you to think about this is when you think you are right and you cannot tolerate people thinking differently, you live in the dark ages. Let me say that one more time to you. When you think you are right, and you cannot tolerate people thinking differently, you live in the Dark Ages. Because precisely that is what happened during those centuries. The lack of tolerance, <laughs> not uh, lactose intolerant, right? <laughs> but the lack of tolerance for different way of thinking. More people to implement Things like the Inquisition, and I'm going to give you details about it later. But in today's world, here in America, do you think that we have people that are so intolerant to other people's views 
What do you think? Well, you know it's true, and some people are like that. Sadly, even among Christians, sometimes within our own churches, in our congregations, we have people that just cannot tolerate others because they think differently. Well, you know what? That is exactly like living in the dark ages. Second fact, when you punish people because they don't think like you, you live in the dark ages. The same thing. And you are thinking, well, punishment, what do you mean by that? Well, it's very simple. You know that sometimes you disagree with somebody. That's normal. But you are able to put up with them, tolerate them. You say, well, you know what? I, I, I don't agree with this individual, but I'm going to work with him, whatever the relationship is. But imagine if you just can't tolerate that person. Simply, you just can't tolerate, can't, can't put up with them. And you punish this person, how? By simply closing the door of communication with him, with her, with them. You punish that person because you exclude this person from different functions. Things like that. Excluding people that just think differently, that is exactly what happened during the Inquisition, just being so judgmental. So here I go with my first question to you. Do you feel that you punish people because they think differently than you? Tell me honestly, do you punish them? You just don't want to talk to them anymore? simply because they think differently than you? Well, that, my friend, is like living in the dark ages during the Inquisition. Third point, when you hate people that have a different lifestyle than yours, you live in the dark ages. Hate is a strong word. And you know, we are used to say, I hate mustard, I hate menace, I hate pickles, I hate cal jalapenos. Or like my friend says, jalapenos. <laughs> when somebody says, I hate this, you know, sometimes it's just a, a, a misuse of the word. You know, we just say, I don't like it. No, I'm not talking about that kind of meaning. I'm talking about the real meaning of hating people. Do you hate people because they have a different lifestyle than yours? Whatever it is what you disagree on their viewpoint, whatever it is what they do, do you hate them? If you hate people because they think differently than you, the, when they act in a different way than you, you just can't tolerate them. You punish them. In your heart, you say, disapprove. The stamp of disapprove. And then you move to the next level, which is hating people. Okay, friends, let's just stop for a moment. What kind of Christians we could say that we are, that we go through all these layers, you see, from really being intolerant to individuals that think differently than us, to punish them in our minds and in our hearts, to the point of hating them? What kind of Christians are we? No, not, not the kind that the Lord God wants us to be. Now, let me go a little bit far, farther here. When you want to eliminate from the earth those who have a different view of life, really, you live in the dark ages. That's exactly what happened during the Inquisition. Killing, assassination. So... I have to ask you this question. Do you feel the desire of eliminate people from the earth? Do you feel that way? Well, my friends, we have to reflect about this because the Lord God, he doesn't feel that way. 
If we are, if we are God's children, and we are because by faith in Jesus, we are forgiven. Think about the, these layers that I told you, the levels that I just mentioned to you. First of all, you just can't tolerate them. Then you punish them in your heart. Then you hate them. And finally, you want to eliminate them from the earth? Wow. Certainly, individuals like that have an issue. And I will say they need to go to look for help. Therapist, may, maybe. Counseling, definitely. And more importantly, they need to repent and ask for forgiveness to the good Lord for having such a mentality. Now, I don't think that anyone here in the church or you, my friend, watching or listening, you feel that way. I have the feeling that you are a godly person. I want to believe that you are interested in knowing more about the Inquisition, probably because you are a believer or maybe you are just a curious person and you say, well, I would like to know what this guy has to say about the Inquisition. Okay, so this is my intro to you. But let me go with a five fact here. Those who can stand you when you express your views and beliefs live in the dark ages. We are done with how we perceive and approach the problem, okay? So now let's change the angle. What about those people that can't, can't stand you when you express your views and beliefs? Do you know people like that? Do you have friends like that? Co-workers like that? Customers? Maybe your supervisor? <laughs> Clients? Neighbors? Relatives? People that can stand you. As soon as you are saying whatever you think, and they can't stand you because you are expressing your views, that person lives in the dark ages. That person is in, really in darkness because you are entitled, first of all, to have your own opinion and to express that opinion. Whatever is what you feel about situations and particularly your, your views about God, spirituality, Christianity, your beliefs about the Bible, Jesus, church, the Trinity, Worshiping God. If there is anybody that can stand you when you are expressing your views, that person, again, needs, needs help. You know, it is okay for anyone this not liking what we broadcast here. And I will tell you something that is amazing to me is the amount of people that uh, are right now watching and listening. I was highly surprised. Last week, I received an email from our podcast uh, supplier. And we are ranked 74, I think, in the world in the uh, category of religion and spirituality. Every week, there are now 4,300 people downloading our podcast. There are many people that like what we do, what we say, what we express, videos, and on and on, and wait, because we are working for the last year creating phenomenal products that we are about to release soon that have to do with music, and you will be happy to see what we're going to release probably in, in a couple of months. We will start in a couple of months. Awesome products that we are creating. It is okay for people to not feeling interested about what we say here in Victory Church. It is okay for people even to just block me on social media and they say, I don't want to hear this guy ever again. That's okay. But from there, to being mean, disrespectful, <laughs> that's a separate issue. And some people just can't stand me when I express my views and beliefs and when I talk from the Scripture. Those people are in 
living in dark, in the dark ages. Sixth fact, those who live in the dark ages eventually realize that they were wrong. It's just a matter of time. It's just a matter of time, my friend. If, uh, if you are conscientious, and if, you, if you want to be honest with yourself, you know that throughout the years you have changed in many ways. At some point you said, I will never do this, and, and you did it. I will never go this place, and you went. I will never do this, and you did. Well, you know, I have found myself precisely into that category, changing my mind. And everyone that is in the dark ages, and I think that in many ways we all have been part of the dark ages when we are so intolerant and we are so drastic in, in our views and how we perceive the world and life and how we treat people, but eventually we see the light. And we can realize, mm, I was wrong. I was wrong. That is the, the part that I like about being wrong. <laughs> that eventually I can realize that I was wrong and change. And that is my hope. You know, I'm a very positive person. I'm very enthusiastic and optimistic. No matter what, I try to see the good side of everything, the bright side, right? Like in the movie, always look at the bright side of the light. Anyways, I try to be positive most of the time I am, but I have my moments, certainly. But one of the things, when I see how certain groups or people, friends, relatives even, neighbors, people that follow me, people that make comments and all that, when everyone is doing something wrong against God or the Bible, you know what? I, because I'm positive <laughs> and hopeful, I always think one day this person will realize I was wrong and it's going to change. It's going to change and that is my hope. Seventh fact. The dark ages are seasons for each generation trying to impose their views to the rest. Let's just start with music style. <laughs> Do you agree with me? We were young and we were liking certain music. How many of you remember Donna Summer? <laughs> How many of you remember Frankie Valli in the Four Seasons? You know? <laughs> Barry Manilow. The other Barry. Very white. white, right? The Commodores. You know, that was when I was young, in, in the 70s, 80s still. So for, for, my, for my parents, that music was not, not too good. But what about them? The Beatles. Okay, let's switch now. What about... Clothing. Do you realize that I am a minister, I'm a pastor, and I am here wearing blue jeans? This is a sanctuary. Where is my tie? <laughs> right? Where is my color? So many things have changed in the world, and every generation wants to impose their views to the rest. That, that's the issue. Dark ages, if you can see it now, it's something that happens constantly. It's happening right now. Has happened and will happen all the time because it's the lack of tolerance to accept other people's views. Do you see that? I'm not saying we have to change our views all the time. I'm just stating a fact. The lack of tolerance towards other people's views, that's the main problem here and trying to impose our views towards them. But I want to tell you something that the Lord Jesus lived in Matthew chapter 22 that pretty much says it all. So let's read together here. 
Matthew 22, verses 23, 28 forward. Some Sadducees came to Jesus. Now, Sadducees believed that no one would rise, rise from death. They didn't believe in resurrection. So the Sadducees asked Jesus a question. They said, teacher, Moses told us that if a married man dies and has no children, his brother must marry the woman. Then they will have children for the dead brother. Well, this is the hypothetical case. Listen to this. It's so foolish. There, there were seven brothers among us. The first brother married but died. He had no children, so his brother married the woman. Then the second brother also died. What are the odds? Let's keep reading. The same thing happened to the third brother and <laughs> all the brothers, the other brothers. The woman was the last to die. Can you believe that? I mean, this is just silly, right? But let's continue reading. But all seven men had married her. So when people rise from death, whose wife will she be? <laughs> Do you see this? Sadducees confronted the Lord Jesus with apparently a very honest question. It, it, it was not an honest question. The premise is wrong. Seven brothers, all they die, no children. Come on. <laughs> what are the odds? Oof. Anyways, well, listen. Here is the answer from the Lord. Chapter 22, verses 29 through 32. Jesus answered, you are so wrong. Well, we all knew that. <laughs> you don't know what the scriptures say. And you don't know anything about God's power. All the time when people rise from death, there will be no marriage. People will not be married to each other. Everyone will be like the angels in heaven. Surely you have read what God said to you about people rising from death. God said, I am the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob, so they will not be dead because he is the God only for living people. So now let me point out to you this part of the answer. Jesus answered, you are so wrong. You don't know what the scripture say. And you don't know anything about God's power. So here the Lord Jesus confronted them directly. You are wrong. That is the point, right? They wanted to be right because they believed they were right. And the Lord Jesus found people like that too. You see? And the Lord said, no, you are wrong. You are wrong. Let's continue reading. Verse 34 forward. Now the other group shows up. <laughs> this gets so interesting. The Pharisees learned that Jesus had made the Sadducees look so foolish that they stopped trying to argue with him. So the Pharisees had a meeting. Then one of them, an expert in the law of Moses, <laughs> asked Jesus a question to what? To test him. He said, teacher, which command in the law is the most important? Jesus answered, love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, and all your mind. This is the first and most important command. And the second command is like this, the first one. Love your neighbor the same as you love yourself. All the law, all of the law and the writings of the prophets take their meaning from these two commands. So let me point out to you areas of his answer. Love the Lord your God with all your heart. Love the, your neighbor the same. Love the, your neighbor the same as you love yourself. All the law and the writings of the prophets take their meaning from these two comments. What is what the Lord is saying here? Guys, you are wrong. You are looking for comments. The point here is to learn to love. So you see, when we are thinking of the Dark Ages, one of the things that we noticed is that it is all about being against somebody. I am right, you are wrong. I can't stand you. I hate you. And I wish that you would be dead. And the Lord Jesus is saying, you know, all is based on loving God and love everybody. Loving yourself, loving everyone else. So you see, my friend? 
So now that we understand good part of what is happening biblically in the times of the Lord Jesus and in our days, I want to take you to a very important conclusion. Both groups were certain of knowing the truth, and yet both were wrong. They were certain. We know. This is what we know. I am sure about that. I am certain. But no, both groups were wrong. Both were wrong. <laughs> it is interesting because precisely speaking about independence, which will be the topic of the following Sunday, July the 4th, Jesus makes my independence possible. This teaching about the Inquisition is totally connected with our independence, and you are wondering why. Okay, well, let me go through certain definitions that I am sure are going to be so interesting to you. To begin with, the definition of Inquisition. Inquisition, an ecclesiastical tribunal established by Pope Gregory IX in the year 1232 for the suppression of heresy. It was active chiefly in northern Italy and southern France, becoming notorious for what? For the use of torture. In 1542, the Papal Inquisition was reestablished to combat evangelical Christians, which is known as the Protestantism movement, eventually becoming an organ of papal government. Also in Spain, the years 1478 to 1834, the Spanish Inquisition served to consolidate power in the monarchy of Spanish kingdom, but it achieved that end through infamously brutal methods. What are we talking about here? We're talking here about killing people. And everything started with a pope. Isn't it that strange to you? Don't you think it's weird that when you're talking about religion and the church and leaders, things will go that far? Well, it happened. Let me show you this map, not just because the map points out the main countries, not just in Europe, but also in America. But at the same time, I am including important dates in facts that are historical, and anyone can confirm that just by doing some researches. The Inquisition, which was based on trying to contain heresy, it was a period of hundreds of years where church leaders were precisely the ones establishing the punishment and the methods of torture just because they disagreed with what that church believed. How can you believe that? How, you, how can you say, yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> that doesn't make any sense. And you know what is interesting? Precisely during those years, in those centuries, Columbus was illuminated by the Lord God to find a new continent. And it was in October in 1492 that by crossing the North Atlantic with three ships, Aniña, La Pinta, and Santa Maria, those ships, Columbus discovered America. But it's interesting that during those years as well, Martin Luther, in the year 1517, he wrote his thesis that basically were contradicting those church leaders that they said 
this is the way to do church. Luther read the scripture and point out the mistakes and said, no, and that, my friend, is the reform of the church. The Christian evangelical church is the result. Is the result of God working the, through the Holy Spirit in Martin Luther so he can rediscover the grace of God that we are forgiven by faith in that we need to follow the principles of love, compassion, and understanding rather than being brutal and apply torture to people that disagree with us. So, as you can imagine, in the 1500s, it was a huge revolution in Europe, and a lot of people started to have tremendous difficulties there. The Inquisition was strong. Many people, particularly in England, they said, we believe what Martin Luther is saying. We now have the Bible. The Bible was printed then by Gutenberg, the first book ever printed, the Bible. And they start reading the Bible, and they said, all that Luther is saying is true. So they started to experience freedom, but politically speaking, in Europe, Kingdoms were precisely ruling the countries. Then is when in the 1600s, we have the settlers. And the first place that they came was to Virginia in a place that we call today Jamestown. So now with all the settlers here in America, eventually it was necessary to fight for the independence that it was finalized officially in 1776. So you see, the Inquisition, is a, it's an idea, right, that became a reality in a wrong way, done by a wrong way from the leaders of the church in those years. But as, as a result of that, you see the development of human history and also freedom, and particularly the development of Christianity through all these brutal acts. That is amazing. It is amazing because in today's world, here in America, we don't need to go to other places. We know how many people are against the truth. And they are so anti the truth they can't stand the truth. They don't want to hear the truth from the scripture. So there is no difference, really. It is the same wrong idea. And you know, this uh, perversity and wrong leadership, also, we know that happened again in Europe in 1940s through the Nazis led by Hitler killing millions of Jews because they said they are not like us. So we know that ha happened here in America and everywhere, and perhaps you know people that think that way. You know, one thing is to have your group, my friend. One thing is to have a clique, whatever is where you <laughs> do life. But from there go to murdering and killing people just because they disagree one another. Uh, that's a little bit much. <laughs> I want you to know that there are seven reasons why the Lord God allows things to happen. And they are because humans need to learn these seven things. The first thing that we all need to learn in life, while we go through all this Horrendous experiences to begin with the persecution, persecution of the church in the first, second, and third century to the Inquisition. Throughout all these facts that I refer to you, till today, we need to acknowledge that this life that we have here in this world is temporary. My friend, 
your life on earth is temporary. You have to start thinking about eternity one way or other. You are going to experience eternity. The Bible shows us there are two paths. One is a narrow path through Jesus that will take us to heaven. And the other path <laughs> is wide and takes people to hell. Your life is temporary, my friend. My friend, you are not going to be here forever. Nobody is going to be here on this earth forever. You are going to get older and older, and eventually you're going to die. Because your life on this world is temporary. And we all need to acknowledge that. Somebody will say, I already knew that. That's not news for me. Okay, well, let me ask you then. If you have acknowledged that, have you seek, seek and find the truth in God? Have you done that? Seeking and finding the truth in God. Have you? Because many people fully understand and accept that we are just a few decades on this planet. But many of them, they just give up on their ideas of something else, and they say, and that's it. Once we die, that's it. Well, no, that's not it. That's the beginning of the rest of our eternity. But if you seek God, and you find in God the truth, you will experience eternal life in Jesus. Third thing, why the Lord allowed all these things to happen? It's because we need to learn to cohabitate with the rest. And you need to learn to do that. It's not easy. We disagree. We don't like how some people behave. Sometimes it's not what uh, we consider uh, the right way to behave. But it doesn't matter. We need to learn to cohabitate with the rest. The next thing we need to learn is to respect each other, my friend. So I want to ask you this. Do you respect the rest even if you disagree with their view, their lifestyle, and how they think about everything? Do you respect them? Because many things that we have lived as humans are allowed by God to come to this point of learning to cohabitate with the rest in respect, respecting one another. The fifth thing, we need to learn to do what is right. And sometimes that means, number six, fight for justice. Sometimes you have to fight for justice in order to do what is right. Defending those who are in big need, those who are in trouble. You know, sometimes here in America, we just uh, really, we don't appreciate the greatness of our country, the freedom that we have, the opportunities that we have here to learn, to work, to make money, to make a living. We really do not appreciate the opportunities to go to school, to obtain health, good health, medical assistance, the security that comes from the law enforcement. We take it from granted. But there are other places that things are not like that today. I want to tell you quickly that in some countries in Asia that are communist, they don't have this freedom that we have here. There are countries where there is a dictator today. They don't allow them to hear a teaching like this. 
Never. Because that will open their eyes. But we here in America, we just don't care most of the time. You see people, they just want to get the new car, the new iPad, the new iPhone, go to the new restaurant, etc. We are so wrapped into this shopping thing that we forget that there is other places in this world other than where we live. And being honest sometimes, here, next door perhaps, just a few blocks from your home, there are individuals that are going through tremendous difficulties and somebody has to do what is right. Somebody has to fight for justice. And the seventh thing that why the Lord allows all these things to happen is that we can expect Jesus' eternal kingdom. Because regardless of what happens on this life, my friend, regardless of the results of your life, whether you become wealthy or poor, whether you have a strong, large family or just, just you without even descendants, whether you become really popular or you are just an average person with a few friends, regardless, there is an eternal kingdom where Jesus is the Lord. And I want to invite you today, if you have never given your life to the Lord Jesus, to do it for the first time. Are you ready for a new life, my friend? Do you know that the only requirement the scripture declares in order to be saved is to believe that the Lord God gave life to the Lord Jesus after his sacrificial death. So he came back to life. Do you believe that? My friend, do you believe that God in Jesus is able to forgive you. Today is the day, and I want to invite you to give your heart to the Lord if you have never done that before. And there is a prayer on the screen that I'm going to give you. So you can say it with me, and that will take you to a new, different life. Say with me, dear God, thank you one more time for everyone who has fought for me. Thank you, Lord. For those who today fight spiritually for my soul, please forgive me. Lord, you are the one that I want to adore. You are my God. I open my heart to you, Lord. I confess my sins before you. I want to obey you and trust you and serve you forever, my Lord. Starting today, I want to see life and people exactly as you do. Please help me, Lord, to become the person you want me to be. My friend is here on this beautiful cross where we are saved. So treasure the sacrificial death of our Lord Jesus and say with me, I am forgiven by Jesus. My Lord can do everything. His word is true and active in me. My life is going to be great and blessed in 2021. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord smile down on you and show you his kindness. May the Lord answer your prayers and give you peace. From Odessa, Texas, my wife, my church members, my team, and I say to you, see you next time. for watching Victory Church, please feel free to contact us. Our email address is info at vchurch.us and our phone number is 432-614-9798.